So in this very brief video, we're going to develop the equation for conservation of angular momentum. So the pattern continues. We first of all need to identify what quantity we're considering. So we're going to let B equal angular momentum. So angular momentum is R cross MV. So notice it's still a vector because the cross product of two vectors is still a vector. And the new thing that has come in here is this position vector. Well, this position vector has exactly the same meaning as the position vector in the fluid static section of the course. It is a vector whose root is at the origin of our coordinate system and whose tip is at whatever portion of the control volume we're studying at that time. So we'll see through some examples here how we define that position vector r. But the angular momentum is defined as r cross mv. So the next thing we need to do is identify the angular momentum per unit mass. So we divide by mass. So beta is just r cross v. So that's really all we need to do. The next thing we do is substitute those into the general form of Reynolds transport theorem. and we get this as a result. So this is the final form of the general equation for conservation of angular momentum. So let's take a look at this. So first of all, let's look at the right-hand side of the equation. Well, the right-hand side of the equation is really analogous to linear momentum. This is exactly the same as linear momentum. The only difference is that each of these terms has an r cross v in it instead of just a v. So the physical meaning of those terms is exactly the same, only it's talking about angular momentum rather than linear momentum. So right-hand side of the equation, there's really nothing different except the R cross in each term. So everything that we've learned in doing linear momentum problems also applies here. We just need to do that extra step of identifying the position vector and taking that cross product when we're working with these terms on the right-hand side of the equation. Now the left-hand side of the equation is going to be all of the moments or all of the torques applied to our control volume that result in that change in angular momentum that the right-hand side of the equation represents. Now if you look at these four terms that we have on the left-hand side of our angular momentum equation, they are identical to the left-hand side of the linear momentum equation, except that each of the terms has an R cross in it. So all of these are identical except for that R cross. So what is the physical meaning of this? Well, in linear momentum, that was the body force. Well, here it is just the moment or the torque created by that body force around the origin of our coordinate system. And we convert it into a moment by taking R cross G here instead of just G. What is the physical meaning of this term? Again, it's pressure forces, but it's the torque or the moment created by all of the pressure forces around the origin of our coordinate system. Likewise, what is this term? Well, it's the moment or torque created by the viscous forces about our coordinate system. And finally here, instead of a reaction force, this is a reaction torque. So instead of R, we call it T. But the physical meaning of it is exactly the same. Remember in linear momentum, we talked about our control surface cutting through a solid object, and that solid object could exert a force on our control volume. Well, that solid object can also exert a torque or a moment on our control volume, and that's what that T accounts for. So that's the end of the development of the conservation of angular momentum equation. It's analogous to linear momentum, just with an R cross in every term to turn it into angular momentum. Now, just like our other conservation equations, there is also a uniform flow version of this equation, and the only term that that affects is this last one. So if we can assume uniform flow at our discrete discharges and inlets, then that last term in the general form of the equation can be replaced by these summations over the discharge and inlets. And the only difference between these in linear momentum, again, 
is we're taking our cross V at each discharge and inlet rather than just V. So angular momentum rather than linear momentum. So that's the end of this quick look at conservation of angular momentum. We'll now take a look at examples to see how this is all implemented. See you in the example videos.